Hey, what's up everybody? wanted to show you how to upload a picture to your family tree and tag it to a person. So I was going through a couple of old uh, shoe boxes that I found in a closet and found pictures from my mom and dad's honeymoon back in 1979. So I'll just show you with one of those pictures what it looks like to upload it. So I'm going to go to my dad since he's going to be the one in this picture. And then you can do it two ways. You can either click Add Media right down here, or you can go to the Media Gallery. That'll show you where you have, uh, if you have any other pictures or stories, audio or video recordings of that ancestor, they'll all list them right here. So there's none that I've imported in there yet. So I'm going to click Add Media, and then I'm going to upload media from my computer. I have the option to type a story, record like an audio interview that we have uh, we have with each other or also record a video but this time I'm going to upload media from my computer in this case it's a picture uh, you can also upload like PDFs uh, Word documents things like that it's important to remember though that Ancestry will only accept pictures up to 15 megabytes if you're scanning them in then you should have no problem being under that if you're uploading digital pictures though you might run into a little snag uh, because your picture size is over 15 megabytes. In this case, uh, we're under it, so I'm going to select the picture that it is. It's him riding a moped in the Bahamas, and then we're going to wait for it to upload. Depending on your picture size, it might take a little while to upload, but it's usually pretty fast. So the upload is finishing up right here, and then I'll show you what uh, kind of information I add to it. So it asks you to put a title. I usually just leave the title that the picture had originally. That way, if I ever need to go back and find those pictures on my computer or external hard drive, I've got the file name right there. Category type, you can select if it's a portrait slash family photo, a site building a place, a headstone, a document or certificate or other. In this case, I'm going to select other because it's kind of a candid photo. And then you're going to input the date. Uh, you always want to use the recommended date guideline that they give you, which is day, month, then year. If you're from uh, anywhere but America, you're pretty much used to doing the dates that way. And the reason that's important is so that way we're consistent across all records. What I usually do if I don't know information is I put in X's. So in this case, I put XX since I don't know the day. And then I put XXX again, since I don't know the month. And then I would put in the year, 1979. And I leave those X's in there just in case. Maybe I do a personal interview or come across other pictures or documents that give me a more specific date. I can always come in and change these uh, X's to the actual values that they are. Location, I'm going to put Bahamas. And description. I always write my descriptions in third person. That way it's easier. Obviously, you're not going to be the one that's always reading it, the description that you wrote. So it's easier and more objective for other people that are reading it. So the description I'm going to add is, uh, we'll put Ken Lentz riding a Vespa scooter during his... Honeymoon in 1979. And then we'll add just a little more information. The honeymoon was in the Bahamas. And was with his spouse, Karen Cranky. Now you have the option, since I referenced uh, my mom, and then that would be my dad's spouse. In the description, you can add, attach her to the picture as well. All I would do is click attach and then start typing her name into here, and then it would pop up. I'm under the opinion that if that person's not in the picture, that I don't add them into it. So now that I've filled in all the information that I know about the picture, and then if you want to, you can select use as the primary photo. If you don't have a photo, I think it automatically defaults to using this as the photo. 
And then once that's done, you're just going to hit Save Added Information. And then that'll take you back to the person's page and under their media gallery. And you can see that it's updated with the picture in their little avatar box. And then it's also listed as media. So if your tree is public and the ancestor that you've added the picture for is deceased, uh, anybody can see that picture. And you can change those sharing settings so that's not the case. Uh, and I believe you can do it for living relatives as well. But by default, living relatives are not shown in shared trees, especially the picture information. So hope that helps and you guys are able to add a bunch of pictures to your family trees and maybe we can have common ancestors and share those pictures back.